Great. Okay. All right. Over to you, Nico. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I uh, appreciate you inviting me here today to talk to the public sector SIG. Uh, really happy to talk about Firefly and um, kind of talk about what's new in Firefly 1.1. Uh, I have a, a small demo that we can look at. I'd like to keep this, I, I do have some slides that I can talk through, but I'd like to keep this rather informal and uh, more of a discussion because I, I would love to hear from other folks in the public sector SIG about uh, specifically things that are interesting topics to them. So what I'd love to do is just uh, give a brief overview of what Firefly is. I, I know some of you are familiar with that already, so I won't belabor the point for too long, but if, if folks are unfamiliar with Hyperledger Firefly, um, I, I think it'll be helpful to, to give just a, a brief bit of background so we all are on the same page of what it is we're talking about. And then, uh, Jim, I, I know you gave me a list of, of topics to that would be interesting to the group, and uh, we can talk through those or uh, whatever folks want to talk about and kind of go from there. So, uh, like I said, fa fairly informal. Would love to keep it interactive as we go. Um, but yeah, let's jump in with just kind of a, a brief intro. So. When we look at the, uh, so th this is a, a deck that we gave at uh, a presentation that we gave at Hyperledger Global Forum. And I also have the demo that we gave there as well that I, I can show again in this group if anybody wasn't there for that. Um, but we're kind of talking about the, the Web3 landscape and uh, kind of the, the Gen 1 approach to building blockchain apps for enterprises was, you know, there's this world of, of what, everything that we call Web3. And that includes things like uh, consortium networks, either uh, public or private chains being layer one or layer two. Uh, there are ecosystems with exchanges and tokens and value, and, and as well as all these DeFi apps that uh, people are creating uh, around these ecosystems as well. So there's all, all kinds of things in this, in this Web3 world. And the Gen 1 approach was for enterprises to build a custom platform to connect to these, so th there was a, a lot of uh, there's a, a lot of custom code that goes into every enterprise app. You know, you have you have your your common foundation of your blockchain and maybe the the specific chains. And there's a lot of open source projects in the at the actual DLT layer, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, Ethereum, and and uh, Hyperledger Besu, and many other implementations of the Ethereum protocol a lot of great open source projects at the DLT layer. But then when you start looking at, okay, what, what do I need to build on top of the DLT to actually build an enterprise app? Everybody's just building a, a custom stack on top of that. And there's a lot of components that are common to every enterprise Web3 app that gets built. So the Gen2 approach is to use a, an open source platform to uh, take care of all of these common components and uh, build a Web3 app on top of that common platform to, to, for enterprises to stop having to rebuild the same types of things for every single app that they build. That common platform is Hyperledger Firefly. So Firefly is what we describe as a Web3 super node. It is a, a platform that sits a layer above the blockchain and it orchestrates both the, the blockchain and off-chain data and flows as well. To, to provide an API and tools that developers are already familiar with, even if they're not Web3 developers, even just regular Web2 developers like, like I am or used to be. <laughs> um, it, it provides familiar things like, like REST APIs and, and WebSockets and things like that that developers can use uh, to, to leverage these building blocks that Firefly has in it already that are uh, these common patterns that we see in, in every Web3 app that they need. And I'll, I'll get into what some of those are in just a little bit. But it's, it's this platform that the developers can use to easily build blockchain apps and uh, not have to keep rebuilding the same uh, plumbing and infrastructure over and over again. So here's uh, this picture for me helps kind of uh, put that into perspective. So you know, down here at the bottom, uh, hopefully you can see where I'm pointing with my mouse. Um, you know, you, you have, you when, when you start thinking about, okay, I'm going to build a blockchain app. Well, I'm going to start with the blockchain and I'm going to start with a, a smart contract that does the business logic that I need to do. And then, uh, you know, that, that makes sense. That's kind of where everybody starts. That's down here at this layer. Like I said, tons of great open source projects down there already. We're not looking to, Firefly is not looking to be yet another blockchain. Uh, it's looking to provide functionality on top of that. 
once once you start down this road of uh, trying to 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 build an enterprise app, though, you know, okay, you get your smart contract, and then you begin realizing actually there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh, I I can't put on the chain. Either it, the data is too sensitive, or it's too big, or uh, it needs to only be shared with certain parties and not everybody. Um, or maybe there are uh, you know, a lot of a lot of enterprises have GDPR requirements where they need to actually be able to to delete the data itself. Um, and obviously you can't delete data out of a blockchain once it's in there. So, so people start realizing, okay, there's there's this mix of things that need to go on the chain, things that need to stay off the chain, and I need something to manage all of that for me and to, to create uh, these connections between on-chain data, off-chain data, uh, to be able to transmit to, to broadcast things to to other parties if this is a um, a consortium network or or to privately send data between members of the consortium uh, I need something to be able to manage tokens whether they are uh, fungible or non-fungible tokens tokens are are an essential part of just about every blockchain app um, and so there's, so there's all kinds of these pieces and this is what we see in the all these these yellow blocks over here. And so, so rather than rebuilding all of these pieces over and over again, Firefly is this platform that, has, hey, we've we built all this stuff. It's open source. You can extend it. It is, uh, it's free, and it it looks to be the uh, the the go to platform to to build a Web three app on top of. And so, this lets companies focus on, you know, what's what is the thing that's actually going to deliver value for my company? And that's really what enterprises are, are concerned with at the end of the day is, is the business value. So Firefly lets companies focus on uh, not building plumbing, but you know what's, what's the actual application? What's going to deliver value to my business and to my customers? And focus really on that piece rather than all of these rebuilding all these building blocks over and over again. Uh, they can just use Firefly. So hopefully that kind of helps put it in perspective. Um, here's a, a view of the the different things that are in Firefly. This is not an architectural view per se. Um, so as an engineer, I, I kind of look at this and go, oh, it's just a bunch of boxes. Um, but to you know, to to somebody who who wants to look at you know what what value does Firefly uh, provide? That's kind of what this this diagram is describing. So uh, the the three main pillars of, of things that Firefly allows you to do are build apps, flows, and digital assets. And so Firefly has, uh, it has it, it can act as an API gateway. Uh, we call it a, a Web3 gateway. Uh, and we'll talk about kind of the, the different modes that Firefly can run in in a little bit. Uh, it has things that can generate APIs dynamically from smart contracts. It has a, a fantastic event stream API that can index events on a chain and provide reliable either webhooks or uh, WebSocket subscriptions to deliver those events to your application. Uh, and that, that event bus is pluggable as well. Uh, this will probably be a common refrain throughout the entire presentation, but just about everything in Firefly is pluggable, which means uh, there's there may be more than one option for the implementation of it, uh, including the blockchain itself. Uh, blockchains have plugins and connectors in Firefly, which means that the the actual core of firefly which we see here in the middle is strictly speaking blockchain agnostic it talks to a connector that knows how to talk to a specific chain and uh there's actually one of the the really new thing the new exciting things in firefly 1.1 is a, a framework to build new blockchain connectors and we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, but out of the box hyperledger firefly works with hyperledger fabric uh all flavors of Ethereum or EVM compatible chains, which include Hyperledger Besu, um, Quorum, Go Ethereum, Public Mainnet Ethereum, Polygon, and a bunch of other EVM compatible chains. If, if it's compatible with, with EVM and uh, JSON RPC, it, it should work. Um, so uh, and there's there's also kind of a, a starter kit for Corda as well, for, for building uh, Cord apps that, that use Firefly as well. Um, so, so like I said, there's there's plugins for everything, all the way from uh, which type of database you're using to the event delivery bus, uh, all the way to the blockchain that it's being used as well. And so, so it's it's a very uh, it's a very pluggable, very uh, microservice type architecture. 
Um, sorry, that was a, a bit of a tangent from the, from this particular diagram, but uh, getting back to, to the diagram, sorry about that. Um, so apps, flows, and digital assets. So we talked a little bit about apps. Um, flows, I kind of I hinted at earlier. Um, so that there's two main modes that Firefly can run in. One is Web3 gateway mode, where Firefly is sort of my, my API gateway to the Web3 world. Uh, I can use it to interact with public chains or uh, maybe a, a private permission chain, but it's just my app talking to a chain. The other mode that Firefly operates in is what we call multi-party or consortium mode. And so in this mode, uh, you may have multiple organizations that have come together, they formed a consortium and they have agreed that they want to use blockchain to integrate with each other. Now they may be competitors in the, the space that they're in. Maybe it's insurance or maybe they're uh, healthcare providers or uh, maybe they're financial institutions. Uh, so, so they they may be they have varying levels of trust of of other parties within the consortium, but they need to perform business transactions, exchange data, exchange value, and so Firefly allows you to build these uh, it's rather complex flows re relatively easily with its API building blocks. So this includes everything from like, for example, I need to I have a piece of data that I need to broadcast to everyone in the consortium, or I have a piece of data that I need to share privately with one member of the consortium or, or a group of members in the consortium. Um, it also allows you to do things like I need to transfer some value. So this gets into the, the, the third category here of digital assets. There are uh, there's great APIs for tokens in Firefly. Like I said, both fungible and non-fungible. And again, this is pluggable. So um, there, there are connectors out of the box for ERC-20, ERC-721, ERC-1155, but again, it's pluggable. So if you have a, a custom token contract or, or some other ERC standard that you want to use with Firefly, uh, it, you can create a, a token connector for that as well. Um, but these digital assets can also be linked with flows. So you can, uh, you can transfer, for instance, you can transfer a token and associate data with that token transfer that could be either broadcast to the entire network, or it could be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to transfer this token from, from myself to another party of the consortium and then privately share some data with that other member of the consortia as well uh, without disclosing that piece of data to the entire network, which is really powerful. Um, there's lots of great tools that go along with Firefly. There is uh, a command line interface that helps you get up and started on your local machine to kind of give you a development environment to build on. Uh, there's an SDK uh, right now for, for Node.js, a TypeScript, and uh, more SDKs to follow. Um, but that, that one's there right now and it works great. It's uh, great to get up and running really quickly building an app on top of Firefly. Um, and then there's just a really great API that uh, has a pretty thorough documentation with the Swagger UI that you can play with right in your browser. Uh, we can look at that in just a little bit. Uh, the whole thing is designed to be run in a, a modern cloud native uh, infrastructure environment. So uh, Kubernetes is kind of the, the go-to deployment model for Firefly and it has Prometheus metrics built right in. Uh, so lots, lots of great stuff for, for developers and operators to run the system in a, uh, a, a really modern cloud native way. So um, I, I didn't talk uh, uh, at great length about the Firefly core, but the Firefly core is, is uh, one of the really important parts of, of everything. So Firefly core is one of the microservices that runs within Firefly. And it's this orchestration engine. It's sort of the, the thing that is connected to all the other things. And so it is talking to a shared storage bus, a blockchain, and a private data bus as well. Uh, right now, the out-of-the-box implementation for shared storage is IPFS. Uh, there's a the private data bus is a peer-to-peer -peer HTTP with mutual TLS connection. Uh, but again, these are all pluggable, so they can be uh, they can be extended, enhanced, or, or used to other implementations as well. But Firefly Core is doing uh, all of this work of, of coordinating all of these things that are happening both on-chain, off-chain. It's tracking events, indexing things that are happening on-chain, and providing uh, an API for an application to use to query, you know, what, what is the state of everything that's on the chain currently? Uh, what events have happened on this smart contract that I am concerned with? Um, the application can also use Firefly's API to submit transactions to uh, the blockchain and uh, transfer tokens and, and all this great stuff. So the Firefly core is really the, the piece that connects all of the other pieces in the Firefly architecture together. All right, so um, I, we'll, 
we'll kind of move on through, I'll, I'll quickly go through some of these slides. I won't spend a ton of time on them um, because I, I kind of want to, uh, I, like I said, I want to make this interactive. So um, some of the some of the cool features that Firefly has, uh, you can give it a smart contract. It can generate an API for you. Um, this can be, so you, if you have an Ethereum smart contract, you can give it the ABI and it will generate it for you. If you have a blockchain that doesn't have a application binary interface format, like, like Ethereum does, for instance, Hyperledger Fabric doesn't have a standardized way to document all of the inputs and outputs of all the functions and events that are on a smart contract. You can write, Firefly introduces a, a blockchain generic uh, blockchain agnostic format called a Firefly interface or an FFI, uh, which is a, a way to describe your smart contract uh, to Firefly, and uh, it can build an API from that as well. So uh, there's a built-in generator if you're using a blockchain that, that has a standardized way to describe a smart contract, and uh, if not, you can you can write it yourself. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit about how Firefly is a, a Web3 gateway. And uh, it has it has all kinds of stuff that just um, there's, there's some really hard problems that are solved uh, in Firefly and in the blockchain connector level that uh, just allow you to uh, to let Firefly take care of the, the really complicated stuff of like keeping up with the chain or um, resolving when uh, maybe it's a public chain and you you get um, maybe conflicting next blocks and okay which which one is right which one wins um it you know your, your blockchain node is sometimes if you're using a, a blockchain node on a public chain is sometimes unpredictable and uh so so the blockchain connector handles all of these really hard problems of you know keeping track of the the current state of the chain uh indexing a, a certain event type on a smart contract on that chain and going through the, the history of all of the blocks there and uh, building that, that rich queryable history and making that available to easily query via Firefly's API. Uh, we've talked a little bit about data flows and the, the different uh, sort of communication buses that Firefly has. And uh, this is comes in really, uh, is really powerful in a kind of this multi-party consortium mode that Firefly can run in where you have multiple different organizations that uh, want to communicate over a, a private data bus or to, to share data throughout the entire consortium and, and also using the, the blockchain as well. Firefly can manage digital assets at scale, at what we call institutional scale or at enterprise scale. Uh, so there's there's great APIs in there in built into Firefly for managing tokens. Uh, whether they're fungible or non-fungible, there's a, a great, this is a screenshot of the Firefly Explorer, which we'll look at in just a minute that can kind of uh, show you the tokens. Uh, Firefly Core is a, is a, like we said, this orchestration engine for event-driven flows. Um, I'll skip over some of these because we've talked about them. Um, just a, a, a bit of history on the project. Um, and then I'll just briefly touch on some of the things that are new in 1.1, and then I'll wrap up my my slides here in a second. Um, so so Firefly, so so I work at Kaleido, as, as Jim uh, mentioned in his introduction. So um, Firefly, Hyperledger Firefly came out of uh, sort of the so years of learnings by uh, Kaleido, and the original code base was donated to the Hyperledger Foundation uh, in 2021 for um uh to to the hyperledger foundation from kaleido so sorry i was, I was hesitating there because i was trying to make sure i got my the dates right yeah so so june of last year uh firefly launched as a hyperledger lab and then in september it was promoted to a project um we launched 1.0 in april of this year and 1.1 uh, was just announced at hyperledger global forum uh, a couple weeks ago at the beginning of september uh, so, like I said, the, the project is it's a microservice architecture. So it's 19 different repos. So uh, there's there are a lot of places if, if you're interested in getting involved. Uh, there's a lot of places that you can jump in and get involved in the project. Um, there is a variety of languages that are used uh, from GoLang to TypeScript. Um, there's even a, a bit of Java here and there as well. Not very much, but uh, if you if you want to do things with Corda, you're definitely looking at using Java there. And uh, it's the code base has grown to 265,000 lines of code, roughly, uh, when we launched 1.1. Uh, but really, it was it was years of learning and iterating on this idea of like 
a, a lot of blockchain apps that we were seeing built at, at Kaleido were using the same patterns over and over again. And uh, it really came down to a set of uh, fundamental building blocks to build a, a Web3 application, uh, an enterprise grade Web3 application. And we said, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a, a platform that already did all of this for us, that we didn't have to keep rebuilding these same building blocks? Um, and wouldn't it be even more awesome if that platform were open source, so it gains mass adoption uh, throughout the world, uh, and and just and the community can contribute back to it and enhance it and grow the platform as time goes on as well. So that's that's kind of where where Firefly came from. It came from these these years of learning and seeing. Uh, these these common patterns and uh, and the desire to to open source that and create a, a standard that uh, anybody can build a web3 app easily and quickly against um, some really cool features in 1.1 it's by far our biggest release since 1.0 uh, there's a uh, so this distinction of gateway mode and, and multi-party mode are something that's new in this version and along with that so a bunch of these features combine to allow some, some really awesome new functionality, like being able to connect to public chains and exchange tokens on a public chain. Um, you can also connect to multiple chains at the same time. That was one of the things that Jim mentioned specifically that, that he wanted me to talk about here today. Um, so this allows you to, to build flows that actually bridge multiple blockchains. So um, Firefly is, is not by definition a token bridge in and of itself so it doesn't necessarily know the details of a particular contract and how to bridge uh, a certain type of asset from one chain to another type of chain but uh, firefly gives you the connections to connect to multiple chains at the same time and you could build the logic uh, to create a bridge using firefly and uh, firefly provides apis to do that really quickly and easily um so there's there's also a, a a new blockchain connector framework, and this is um, a, one one of the other talking points that Jim wanted me to touch on was um, you know how how to connect to different types of chains. the The blockchain connector framework is a thing that I'm really excited about. It's it's a a really nerdy low level thing. So if you're not a back end engineer, you you may just your eyes may gloss over at this, and that that's okay. But <laughs> for for those of you that are uh, and that and that are interested in blockchain protocols and extending the ecosystem. The blockchain connector framework is a, uh, so, so there's there's two things. One is a an API contract, uh, not, not a smart contract, but a, a, an API contract between uh, the, the blockchain connector and a, a specific implementation of a blockchain connector. So, so what does that mean? So, um, there's a, a Golang library that we, it's, um, if you look it up in GitHub, it's called Firefly Transaction Manager, uh, maybe poorly named, but it, it started, it, it evolved throughout its, its lifetime. Um, Firefly Transaction Manager is a Go library that if you want to build a blockchain connector in Go, it probably has 80% of all of the logic that you need already implemented to build a brand new blockchain connector, regardless of what type of chain you're connecting with. And the remaining 20% is like, how do, what, what is the syntax of submitting a transaction to uh, the chain, the XYZ chain, or what is the syntax for querying a block number or a range of blocks on XYZ chain? And so it provides this interface that a developer can use to say, hey, I, I want to plug XYZ chain. I don't know if that's a real chain. I'm just making that up. I, I want to plug XYZ chain into Firefly. Uh, I, I can just take this Go library and it has all of this really complex stuff of transaction management, uh, nonce management, retry logic, uh, gas price uh, estimation, and and sort of this this uh, managing the policy around like how, how do I handle transactions when things don't go the way I hope they do, because uh, that sometimes happens, especially on public chains. Uh, all, all of the logic around uh, indexing events that are happening on the chain, um, making sure that we have enough confirmations on a transaction to, to be confident that the, the state is final of a certain transaction. All of this stuff is, is implemented in a blockchain agnostic way inside the Firefly Transaction Manager library or the, the blockchain connector framework, as we call it. Um, and it's just up to me as a developer to uh, to write the implementation of like, okay, well, how do I query this chain? How do I submit the transaction? 
how do I how do I check for the current price of gas and, and these sorts of just um, the more low level things. And I I'm really excited to see where where this goes. Um, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, some some groups within the the broader uh, blockchain ecosystem will will pick this up and build new connectors. We, we've been talking to some already that are interested in building a connector for uh, several well-known uh, different public chains. So uh, it's really exciting to, to see where this will go. And hopefully it will be a, a huge head start for people as they're looking to build more blockchain connectors and enhance um, Firefly. So um, like I said, it, it is a, it's a Hyperledger project. So it's open source, it's Apache 2 licensable. Uh, if you're familiar with Hyperledger, it's it's everything that, that Hyperledger is. And uh, it is it is a Hyperledger project. Um, so, so that was kind of the end of that deck. And then I, I can go into a demo. I think uh, what I would like to do, though, is just kind of pause. And we're kind of we've, we've about halfway through the today's meeting. Um, so I think now is just kind of a natural point to pause and ask if there are questions. And maybe we can just have a bit of dialogue. And if there are specific areas that people are really interested in, Jim, maybe you can um, kind of provide some pointers of maybe areas to dive into, whether that's a, a demo or a more just kind of open-ended discussion. Would would love to would love to just hear kind of where the group wants to go from here. So uh, yeah, first of all, Nico, thank you very much for where you've been so far in about 20 minutes. I think if I had another hour, I'd ask you to cover the history of the world. You have a high rate of output, which is awesome. So there's a lot here. We're going to have the recording and the um, slides to post up later to the other groups as well um, for reference, which is important. But I can say on two sides here. One, I was in Dublin. I went to a lab that Nico did on Firefly 1.1. And the key is the uh, labs they put together were actually really well organized for beginners because uh, I was new to Firefly. So that was nice. The other thing I'll say, though, is if you go back and have time later, look at the slides. If you've ever built real blockchain apps, um, and I have either built, you know, probably three or four by now that are on different chains, Fabric and, and so on, some other ones. And if you look at building that whole solution, and also I, as an architect, I've had a chance to look at probably a dozen more in detail as well. If you go through his slides, there isn't a lot that they... Uh, that's outside of what I call the scope of Firefly that you have to build. And that's actually a huge, huge win. So actually, and I wanted, I'll grab something on my end, I'm not cheap. So give me one second, there's a, um, there's a slide I'm gonna talk to, which is sort of a, it's one he showed. And let me just flip it up real quick. So let me share my screen uh, real fast. It's this, so you can see my screen, right? If you look at this slide that Nico yep. showed, right, on the left, um, there's a lot more going on, honestly, on the left-hand side, if you're building a blockchain app, than just what he shows here. And so a lot more actually. And if you go over here to the right-hand side, you get what I call, this is what I call the commercial slide. So if I look at my own uh, company, DTCC, and say, hey, we've got blockchain apps to build, and I'm saying, okay, in theory, this is a theory, not a reality. Over here, this big fat um, purple box is what I'm getting uh, from Firefly. Uh, the chains down here, I'm still building the same way. So Nico, jump in and correct me wherever I make a mistake here, but I'll say whatever I'm doing on the blockchain itself, the smart contract definitions and so on, that part of the setup is still done down here. It's yep. the rest of this infrastructure that in a sense, we're saying this is potential gain. So when I'm actually looking, and this is where I need your help, Nico, to pick it up in a little bit, I'm gonna ask you, is we've got two scenarios. You're either building a brand new blockchain app or you're taking an existing application that I actually can think of a couple I've got and saying, hey, you know what? Um, we built them a certain way, they're okay, but they're not really well architected. And the thing I'll say about Firefly, um, the thought behind it is, I'll call it strong from an architecture perspective. As Nico said, there's this concept of everything can, in a sense, become visible, if you will, to the applications and services that need them on the event bus, which is a huge, uh, I'll call it benefit to building a solution. The other benefit, obviously, is you can see, he went through the component slide about all the different component services. Because there are different services, it means, uh, and as he said, a lot of those are pluggable. Those services generally have, I'll call it conceptual interfaces, if not real interfaces. 
uh, which is why in many cases they're pluggable. So in my case, if I want to, and yeah, I'll say I'm looking at existing apps we built in blockchain that, for instance, don't use an event bus or don't have a common architecture across different blockchain platforms you're trying to connect. If I said, okay, what's what for me is the value point for bringing Firefly uh, into uh, a next version of one of those apps to replace what we've already done? Uh, I'm looking at what I call an integration challenge on the, I'll call it the brownfield kind of an app that already exists. Say, okay, my blockchain layer, my smart contract layer, if it's already supported by Firefly, then I just have to use the connectors, fair enough. Um, but I will have to, in a sense, bring over or in a sense, modify some of the stuff that Firefly would generate. So that's my theory that Nico can correct on a brownfield app, but a greenfield app, um, I think where the app doesn't exist and I'm starting out from scratch, um, also want to go through that scenario. So uh, I'll push it back to you. Uh, and by the way, I'll say uh, last point I'm going to make on this slide. Yes, this left-hand stuff is available and even more in the component diagram that Nico showed. On the right-hand slide, if it's a Greenfield app, yeah, I'm going to benefit from the bulk of this. If it's what I call an existing app or a Brownfield app, I'll say, well, I'm going to have to refactor some of the stuff uh, that I will want to reuse some of it I won't, uh, but I'll let Firefly kind of build the framework and then choose what I have to modify in here. So there's still more work to be done in this side. Um, and even in a Greenfield app, I would say, but the idea is even if I realize uh, call it a small section of this potential, that's a massive net gain in three areas, in time, cost, and improved quality because they didn't have to write the code. There's less, quality work, it, it, to build a quality application, there's less uh, testing and debugging for the stuff that already works as standard Firefly components for sure. So those are the potential gains, even if I don't realize the entire purple block there as a net uh, gain for my organization on any app. So with that, let me flip it back to you, Nico. I'm gonna take a look at the chat and see some of the questions there, but give me, uh, the thing that I'm most interested, I guess, is first walk me through from your perspective, um, say I have a, a really trivial app. Um, you know, I know your lab did the NFT things. We had one is, um, you know, create the NFT. And then we, you know, we're doing, I think, transfers of an NFT sales, if you will, whatever, redemptions and so on. Um, if you were building a new app and you can use, I don't care if you use Ethereum or Fabric as your base blockchain, but walk me through what I call, from your perspective, the right flow Given Firefly as my tool set, what would you see as the right process uh, to design that app? Do I start at the smart contract level? Do I start at an application level with, in a sense, contract services? How does that flow work for a, a small brand new app that I'd be building? Yeah, yeah, great question. And uh, so I think, I, I, and I think the initial starting point is actually going to be the same for what you described as the brownfield application as well, where you want to refactor an existing app to use Firefly. And I think actually the right place to start is really um, just trying to wrap your head around what does, like, what are the actual functions that Firefly gives me? Uh, what are the building blocks? And so I'll, I'll just briefly um, I see there's a lot of great questions in the chat. I, I will address those in just a minute because I think there's some great stuff to discuss there, but I'll, I'll take Jim's question um, and I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through real quick. Um, this won't be at a speed that you can follow along in real time, but if you, if you want to later, um, you could go back and, and watch the recording. Uh, but just to, to get started with Firefly, um, I would get started by going to the docs. And uh, in the docs, there, there's a section on understanding Firefly and just you know, what it is. But um, I, I personally learn best by doing uh, rather than uh, reading is, is good. And I, I need reading as well. But doing is the thing that makes it real for me. And so for, for all of the people who learn by doing out there, there's a great getting started guide that walks you through uh, how to set up the, the Firefly command line interface, which is the, the thing that will run Firefly on your computer. And so... I think really the best way to get started is like to just get your hands on it, try it, see what it does. Um, look at, you know, try all the different functions in it. So Firefly command line interface will, uh, you could download a, a binary build from GitHub. Uh, here's the latest release. You can just come down here, 
pick the right one for your operating system and CPU architecture. Uh, you can also use Go install to install it as well. But once you once you install this, uh, it's really easy to set up Firefly on your computer. Uh, just a little diagram of everything that it will set up for you. It's going to use Docker, uh, but it's you just have to type ff init, and then you can name your stack. Uh, you could pick the number of members. Uh, the default is to run it in a multi-party consortium mode. Uh, if you want to run it in a Web3 gateway mode, there are command line flags for that. There are a bunch of different switches. So say you're like, well, I want to try Hyperledger Firefly with Hyperledger Fabric in a multi-party mode, and I want to use Postgres as my database, and I want to enable Prometheus metrics, and th there's there's flags to do all of that. To, to and, and this list that's in the docs is actually not comprehensive anymore because we've added more since then, but you can run ff init help, and uh, it will print out the full list of, of things. And then, uh, so after you create your stack, this gives you a local development environment, just run ff start. So that gets you up and running. Um, what does that give you? So it'll give you a, uh, a all. It'll give you Firefly and all of its services for say I picked three members here in in the in the docs. Uh, so it gives you a, a web UI and a sandbox UI for each one. The sandbox is a, a great place to start. Uh, I'll actually hop over to. I have a um, if I can get this Zoom window out of the way here. Um, I have. Firefly running. So here's my here's my Firefly Explorer. And I also get the, the Firefly sandbox. And so we talked about kind of the, the three pillars of Firefly and the, kind of the three main buckets of functionality. Uh, and those are messages, tokens, and contracts. So uh, I'll, I'll start with messages because like it, it sounds really basic. Um, and it is. It is. It's like um, many of Firefly's other functionalities are built on top of its messaging functionality. But th there's a lot that you can do with it. And so um, I would encourage people as, as you're thinking about uh, the, the Firefly paradigm, um, it's it's an event-driven, most, most blockchain apps end up needing to be event-driven just because blockchains are event-driven. And so um, there, there's a lot that you can actually accomplish just through using messaging, and and the messaging is backed by the the chain itself. So most people immediately think, oh, uh, I need a, a custom smart contract to do business logic X Y Z. Like you can do that, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But I would encourage people to kind of back up and just like take a look at what Firefly does and all the functions that it has built in. Uh, and and see if you can map those to the business constructs that you have in your app. Many times, what we find is that uh, that Firefly is built in. It has a smart contract built in, and I can describe what that does in a little bit. But its built-in functionality between messaging and tokens uh, are actually more than enough for maybe maybe you need a slightly customized token contract, but you don't have to go right like a completely new thing um because like getting the smart contract layer right um getting it secure getting it um so that it can't be exploited getting it so that it can be upgraded properly in the future like th those are those are pretty hard problems very specialized development as well um firefly still gives you that control if you want that level of control and you need it but it has a lot of really powerful functions built in so um, some of the things that I would encourage people to look at are uh, in broadcast messaging. So this is like I want to send some data to everyone in my consortium. Uh, it can be a it can be a string. Uh, it can be a JSON object. That JSON object can uh, so I can define a data type in my network. So I can define like uh, this is what a, the here's the JSON schema for a customer record. Uh, so I'm going to broadcast like I have a new customer record or a new order that was placed in the in the system. Um, you can define these data types and everyone agrees, okay, this is, we all understand what we are talking about when we say a customer record or an order number or something like that. Um, and then you can you can have Firefly validate the, the message against that schema later. Uh, I could just broadcast a, a file. It can be a binary file. It could be an image, a PDF document. All of the payloads of these messages are going to be saved off chain. They're going to be saved in IPFS. And what goes onto the chain is the hash of the actual message. And so all the other Firefly nodes in the network will, will uh, an event will be triggered when 
that new data is pinned to the chain when its hash is, is put on chain. Um, so they'll become aware of it, and then they can go look up in IPFS the actual payload off chain of, of whatever that document or that JSON payload that was broadcasted. Um, just like broadcasting, you can also send uh, strings, JSON objects, or binary files through private messaging as well. And this, the recipients here could be a single recipient, or it could be a group of other organizations within the, the Firefly network. Um, there's you can optionally pin the data to the chain, or you can keep it entirely off chain as well. So that's another option just for if um, maybe you have a part of your application that actually doesn't or shouldn't use blockchain at all. There's There are uh, varying degrees of like how much you want to use the chain in all of this. Um, hopping over to the tokens tab, um, uh, this particular Firefly node sandbox is not set up to actually do uh, tokens here. So I, I'm, I'm not actually going to push the buttons, but if there's a token contract on chain already, um, it's just really easy to connect Firefly to that. I can put in the contract address. I can tell it, is it fungible or non-fungible? And you know what block number you want it to start indexing from. Uh, I'll, I'll just hop over to the uh, the Explorer UI. And so you, I, I do actually have a, so I'm gonna switch names. I, this Firefly node is connected both to a, a private fabric consortium and a, a public, Polygon testnet as well. So if I switch to the Polygon namespace and then I hop over to my tokens tab, uh, I can see, let's see, in the last 30 days, we'll bump this time out. So uh, this was a, a token contract that I deployed during Global Forum. Uh, I can see I minted 100 tokens uh, probably right before, uh, probably this is probably the day before the presentation. Um, I, I transferred some of them during my demo uh, in real time. And I think I minted some more during the demo. And then actually just this morning, I said, hey, I should make sure this stack is still working. So uh, from my MetaMask wallet, I transferred uh, 10 tokens back to the wallet that Firefly is using. So um, really, really cool, really easy to use token capabilities here. Um, the really powerful thing is that Firefly is aware of all these things that are happening. It's it's keeping track of uh, the balances of all these tokens, so that it provides a, a really easy to use API that I can just query and say, hey, what's the balance for for this account? Uh, what is the what what's the entire history of this NFT token and all the times that it's been transferred? Blockchains themselves are not uh, particularly good or optimized for answering some of those questions quickly normally. So so Firefly provides a lot of functionality around that. So um, I, I apologize if this was like uh, just just a segue into my regular demo, but um, getting back to Jim's question, like I think just kind of to start um, where I would start is like just just explore Firefly, use the sandbox, use the there's also a Swagger UI uh, for all of the endpoints on here. Um, play around with this. You can you, know, you can post here to define a data type instead of doing it through the, the sandbox if you want. As you're doing stuff through the sandbox, it's dynamically creating code samples that you can use if you're writing a uh, a Node.js or TypeScript app and you want to use the Firefly SDK, it's generating the code on the fly here that you would use to put in your application to do the specific operation that you're doing here in the sandbox. So really powerful tool just for learning about Firefly. But it's it's really this exercise of like just understanding okay, what, what are the, the building blocks that Firefly gives me and then sort of mapping that to like what are the things that my uh, business application, my my business logic flow needs to do, and um, you know, trying to see like, do, do the building blocks that have been provided uh, cover all the functionality that I need, or maybe I do need to go into the kind of the third door here of, of custom contracts, and then that's okay. Firefly lets you do that as well. You can use Firefly to interact with a completely custom smart contract, um, and you get all of the the rich indexing and uh, really easy transaction submission features of Firefly. So, so that's where I'd start. Um, and I think the same is true for building a, a greenfield app or uh, refactoring an existing app is just sort of this this mapping of like, okay, what what does Firefly do? And like, how can I, what parts of my application can I leverage to, to do that? And uh, hopefully it should be a lot of it. Um, and it's, it's the type of thing too, like if, if you have questions about it, um, 
come come ask us in the in the Firefly Discord channel. We we love to chat about this type of stuff to help people brainstorm. Like, how can I accomplish uh, X Y Z or fill in the blank with with Firefly? Uh, we we'd love to to chat about it. Myself and and the other maintainers are are there and uh, more than happy to to take specific questions of like how to implement a, a certain type of use case in Firefly. Okay, uh, Nico, really quick, um, I we're getting closer toward the end, but we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Um, if you want to hit, I'll say. Sure. Um, one of them says, can the flow support a multi L1 chains layer network, not a consortium, but you know, yeah. give an example there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the flows are really, um, it's, Firefly allows you to build the flows in your application. So uh, we've we've had questions of like, well, does can you do uh, BPMN or or um, with with Firefly? And it, the answer is like Firefly itself doesn't do BPMN, but um, it it gives you so it gives you an API and it gives you an event bus that are really easy to to, to use either through web sockets or web hooks and allows you to to build the the off chain logic of like okay this. This event happened here. Now I'm going to go do this uh, operation on another chain, whether that's another L1 chain uh, or whether it's a, a private chain. And uh, so, 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 so the answer is yes. Firefly allows you to to build that functionality absolutely, and it doesn't matter whether the chain is L1, L2, whether it's public or private. Uh, Firefly can connect to both of them and um, give you the events as things are happening on each chain, and allow you to submit transactions to either one. And one other thing is a question about Fabric, but I'll just say in general, the concept of Fabric has a lot of features in its own, I'll call it a uh, network, if you will, um, that they built into it that some of the other blockchains don't by default. But that said, if you think about Firefly, it's a layer above. It's the application layer over your blockchain network, as you showed in the diagrams. So what that means is to have a common architecture and a common set of services across multiple blockchains. In some cases, you like Fabric is a good, good example. You wind up implementing a feature that Fabric already has differently in Firefly, right? So the, the specific question really talks about the fact that in Firefly, it says, can we use Firefly in place of the gateway SDK? that um, is already provided by Fabric to get to our contracts. And I think the answer to that is yes, through the Fabric connector. There's also, in Fabric, they give you very nicely something called a certificate authority manager that's actually pretty powerful. So if your organization doesn't have one, you can use the CA manager in Fabric directly to you know, create certificates. But I think in Firefly, I'm going to guess we have something similar to that. Is that a fact? So yeah, so, so, so um, just a couple of things there. Um, so we're we're very aware of, um, and, and some people have mentioned like, oh well, if you're blockchain agnostic, then you're least common denominator. And like, I'm very aware that that is a potential pitfall that the that the project could fall into. Um, I I don't think we are like I, that's not the road I want to go down, um, and I don't think we're we're going down that road. Um, I look at it from from this from the perspective of like there there is a set of business problems that I need to solve and what is what's the common set of functionality that I need from any chain um and 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 looking at it sort of from the other direction rather than like oh well uh because I built on Firefly I don't get feature XYZ from from the certain chain there, there it's also worth saying like there's nothing stopping you from going and using a specific feature in a specific chain by um by, by talking to that chain or or the blockchain connector for that specific chain as well um with regard to the Fabric Gateway uh, SDK and uh, the CA, um, so Firefly uses these things behind the scenes. Um, there is actually a specific open issue uh, to upgrade to using the Firefly, sorry, the, the Fabric Gateway SDK. Uh, we're using the, the old SDK right now because right. Firefly is still compatible with um, the Fabric uh, 2.3. Yeah, two point two yeah. the LTS, and it's yeah. So, so we new. haven't we ha we actually haven't upgraded to to that because we don't want to drop support for the old version yet. Uh, right. But 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 Firefly and the, the specifically the Fabric connector inside Firefly will be using the the gateway SDK. Um, so can you use it in place of that? Um, sure. It's um, the idea is that that uh, that it is the platform that you can build your app on top of, and it, and it doesn't like you could actually switch chains later. Um, if you build your app specifically to use the Fabric Gateway SDK, you can't switch to using an Ethereum chain later, uh, and that's 
that is one of the powerful things of Firefly is that if you build to Firefly's API, you can use any of the plugins that Firefly supports. Yeah, and actually you hit, well, what I guess I really like compared to other solutions that I'm aware of, I'll say is the fact that I have the choice, the control is on my end so that I can say, oh, cool, Jim wants to build across three different blockchains and I'll just use Firefly quickly out of the box and follow what I can do there. But what I really like is I have the flexibility and real enterprise apps do need that to say, hey, I have this special feature, maybe in Fabric as an example, that I need to go down and use that. And I can say, well, I built the app to start with and connected it to, uh, to Fabric <clears throat> that way, but now I'm gonna actually use the features in Fabric directly that I need you know, in some new release as an example. And so that's a good, and the only other thing I'll say is the challenge that you guys have on your end, which is, and you know, I don't wanna be the guy well, I'm glad I'm not the guy that writes the Fabric Connector, let's put it that way, for you, because that guy will have to come up with some smart answers. So he'll say, oh, yeah, I'm the brilliant guy that figured out how I can support both the old and the new um, model for uh, Fabric 2.2 and whatever it is, 2.5 or something like that with the Gateway SDK. That that opportunity is really up to you know your team, Kaleido, to figure out how do you, how do you want to design those connectors? Um, but certainly that's, I like the fact that it's, both simple to use, as you said, common, and I can uh, leverage the benefits, if you will, of any specific blockchain just by, in a sense, going to that level and doing a little more work on my end. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, a couple other great questions here in the in the chat. I'm gonna try to hit some of these rapid fire. Um, does Firefly support token definition management on Fabric? The answer is it could. Uh, we Somebody would need to write a token connector that talks to Fabric in order to do that, but it's it most certainly could. We just don't have a, um, there has not been a demand for, or anybody really asking for a token connector for Fabric, but it most certainly could. Um, commercial adoption so far. Uh, I wish I had more time to talk about this, but yes, there is, there's a, a, a good amount of commercial adoption, especially within, uh, so the company that I work for, Kaleido, runs Firefly as a service on top of our blockchain as a service platform and consortium as a service offerings as well. Uh, we have many different customers in different industries. Um, off the top of my head, I, I'm an engineer, so I, I, I have trouble remembering which ones I can talk about and which ones I can't, but um, industries from, from healthcare to insurance to um, quite a few different financial applications yeah. as well. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of commercial adoption already and uh, new solutions that we're working on uh, all the time. Yeah, one, one big area I do want to hit that's important, uh, not only to my company, but obviously a lot of people in the chat too. There's a bunch of I'll call it, uh, identity frameworks based on self-sovereign identity, GIDs, verifiable credentials and all that. And we're trying to figure out, in a sense, what the smart way to integrate to one of those networks might be, as an example. So I, I don't know in the, I'll call it the work that Collider is already doing, I'm sure somewhere they've already taken a look at those kind of projects. And I don't know if there's any kind of a guidance document that you might have or a page that talks about if you're running an identity network, it could be sovereign, could be various, could be a bunch of different ones out there um, with those. How would I map um, an identity credential framework like that into the Firefly world uh, without having to have you build upload a whole new version to do that? Yeah, yeah, so so great topic. Um, unfortunately, that's I, I think that is probably multiple sessions of, uh, and so I, I noticed there was a, another question uh, in the chat. Um, Kyle mentions he's coming from Hyperledger Indie Aries, a non yeah. the world. Yeah. I, I think one of the big takeaways from this year's Hyperledger Global Forum for me was uh, just kind of the, the momentum around self-sovereign identity and yeah. um, the the work that are, is going on in Indie and Aries in Hyperledger um, and, and the, the need for the the folks the Firefly maintainers to to get together with, with some of the folks on those projects and talk about like what what can we do to, to integrate these things um, the identity uh, I'll refer to it as the identity story in in Firefly is not done yet um, right. so there's there are um, there's places in the code where it's sort of stubbed out of like you know this is where we plug in an identity service um, but it's not complete yet and uh, I think that is an area that that we really need to collaborate with some of the other hyperledger projects as well yeah and I will say my company is one of those we have multiple projects that would fit that um, SSI model and would want to benefit immediately from Firefly so that's a common thing cool 
Um, so support for Kubernetes? Yes, that's how we run it in production. Would definitely recommend it. Um, does Firefly support multi-org on multi-network? Okay, so just real quick on, on how this, the structure of this stuff. So Firefly has a concept of a namespace. So a namespace is a set of plugins within Firefly. Um, a namespace either runs in multi-party mode or it runs in gateway mode. So um, you you could have uh, so so like in my in my environment that I just showed a minute ago, I have two namespaces configured. I have one that's a fabric network, and I have one that's a public polygon test net. Um, you could have there there could be overlap between you know an organization could be in multiple namespaces. Um, a and so. So, so yes and no, but it's, it's sort of this, this, this grouping of like, in this namespace, I'm talking to this blockchain, I'm using this database, I am, uh, I'm running in multi-party mode, um, and I have, I have this IPFS instance that I'm using for this namespace. And over here, I, have, I may have the same chain. Um, I may have, and I may be running in a different mode, or it could be a completely different chain. It could be a different, could be public IPFS. It could be a different database. Um, so there's sort of the, the groups of all the, the plugins in Firefly are uh, kind of roll up into this namespace concept. Yeah, and the, so the bottom line on that is I'll say that the concept is ABC org as an organization could belong to two different networks within Firefly uh, in a sense uh, and without any problem at all because those are different namespaces for sure. Yep. Um, how does one create a channel like in Fabric CLI through Firefly? So uh, Firefly is not an infrastructure management tool. So it's it is not um, it's it's not in scope for Firefly to manage the actual blockchain. Um, so so things like Firefly doesn't actually deploy a contract for you. Um, Firefly uh, itself does not actually set up a blockchain for you. Um, that being said, the Firefly command line interface is a a developer tool that will do some of those things for you on your local machine. Um, it does. If you want to use Fabric, it will set up a, a relatively trivial Fabric network on your machine. Uh, it can deploy smart contracts to chains on your machine. It is not a production tool, though. So um, I'll just say that like, cr the creating a channel is how you would normally create a channel in Firefly using uh, right. peer commands. Uh, sorry, in, in Fabric, not Firefly. Too, too many Hyperledger words that right, start right. with that. Yeah. But no, Fabric, you're right. Fabric has many Fabric as a tool. There's actually a very good, if you're looking at Fabric, there's a brand new, what they call full stack uh, Fabric tutorial they just built that does deploy directly to Kubernetes as well. So, uh, you know, if you're looking at really Fabric, go take a look at that tutorial, come back and take go through the getting started on Firefly uh, to figure out how, to, how Firefly works and can, in a sense, build something quickly. But the key thing is that the base Fabric, in a sense, is easy to do in mini Fabric. Second thing is you're going to build your contracts over. The last thing I we I want to loop back on the language piece. You said we have Node.js, TypeScript, our SDKs available. Do I have a Java SDK available as well? There is not one currently available, but um, would would love if somebody wants to contribute one. There's okay. so yeah. our our approach has been to generate as much of the SDK as we can from Firefly has a, a pretty comprehensive Swagger definition uh, that is is yeah. part of Firefly um, and like I, I have a love hate relationship with generated SDKs. On the one hand, they're they're really great for being able to um, stay in sync with the the API. Um, sometimes the user experience, the developer experience, leaves some to be desired. So, sure. Um, yeah, that, that's been our approach is to, to to use the the Swagger definition as much as we can, but also still provide a, a good developer experience as well. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, and then the other thing I'll encourage people. Uh, Nico talked about starting with the getting started in Firefly, which I agree with that very much. But as somebody else who has to answer more questions on architecture and I'll call it how Firefly might work, um, I was impressed as somebody who has managed products before when I looked in the documentation. So the concepts you see in the little bubble diagrams on the slides, guess what? There's actually good doc behind that if you dig into it. So like the event bus and how that works and how it integrates, really excited to say, oh, cool. I can literally go as an architect, I can grab that and just throw it over the fence and say, here, this is how it works. 
and it looks funny. It looks like exactly what we wanted to build anyway. So it's kind of nice to see the documentation at the level you have it. So that's great. With, with that, I realize you know, unfortunately, we could go on for only about four days uh, to answer more questions, but we don't have that time. So I do want to thank Nico very much. Uh, really excited that Kaleido has done this phenomenal framework. Really like the clean architecture, not only the architecture of what they're doing, but also the fact that they say these are the boundaries. So we allow you what I call the interface to uh, talk to any blockchain. We give you connectors to start with those kind of things. So it's really a well thought out solution for sure. And selfishly, I intend to use it many, many times within my own company. So I uh, hope the rest of you will follow. Um, certainly, uh, Nico Kaleido is going to produce more stuff on this. And I would also say the community is also, not just myself, but many others in the community will probably also start sharing some of our experience on Firefly. So with that, thank you again, Nico. It's been awesome. I've got to stop the recording at this point. All right. And get back to date everybody just, else. Yeah, just just real quick. Um, thank you, Jim. Thank you, everyone, for for inviting me here today. I will share the slides. I'll send them to you, Jim, and then you can post them to to the SIG page. Uh, if you if you want to stay in touch after this, uh, Hyperledger Discord. Come find us in the Firefly channel, and uh, happy to chat more about Firefly there. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.